catch that last part? Uh, Shannon, how do you interpret what Jerry said? I'm interpreting just like everybody else is interpreting it, Skip, and just like Jason Garrett. Mm -hmm. Jason Garrett, your services will no longer be requ required after this season. He will be coaching, just not here. Because, Skip, he could have said, hey, I have the utmost, most profound respect for Jason Garrett, as he alluded. I can give you a long list of coaches mm. that's been coaching 10-plus years mm. that doesn't have a Super Bowl. And I can give you a list of coaches that did and have Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. But I think very highly of Jason, and I think he'll be a... Because remember, Skip, he kept dropping nuggets. Jason would be a very sought-after commodity. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you got him, you like that commodity said commodity, why are you worried about if somebody else would like him? Mm -hmm. Or someone else would have him? Skip, we knew it was going to come to this. When he walked to that podium at the NFL Combine in February and he says, I'm not extending Jason Garrett, we knew what was going to happen. Because, as you mentioned, Jason Garrett has been the same coach from the day he stepped into that cow on a Cowboy sideline. This is what he does. He's not rah-rah. He's not motivating. He's not anything. And I guess Jerry thought, well, if I dangle this carrot, you're coaching for your contract, you're coaching for your coaching career here in Dallas, he will change. But, Skip, that's all he knows. I mean, you can only coach, you can only do what you know how to do. I mean, wide receivers, to go ask a wide receiver all of a sudden, now, this game, you're going to start at quarterback. Well, he hadn't played quarterback. He's been a wide receiver, so he knows how to play that. Well, Jason Garrett is a, is a even kill, very stoic. He shows, good job, good job, guy. Pat him on the butt when he come off the field. Mm. Skip, what Jason, what Jason, what Jerry basically said, I'm going to have me a new coach but he's going to be in the same vein as the old coach, egoless. So when I step on his, I need him to say the, the owner has every right to be upset and to criticize me publicly, which Jerry has done on numerous, numerous occasions to that man. Jason Garrett deserves better. He will be far better off, but Jerry is never going to get the coach that can give him or as close to guarantees, because you know, Skip, you covered this sports too long. There are no guarantees in sports. That's why we like it. That's mm -hmm. why we like them, Skip. You know, mm. oh, they call oh, it. Why we don't like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Especially with Either your or. team. Yeah. Skip, when you publicly and openly second-guess your coach, when you blatantly and openly criticize your coach publicly, that's the beginning of mm -hmm. an end. I've never seen an owner do this before. I haven't Quite either. Not like this. Not like this. No. So, Skip, he's basically saying, y'all keep asking me, I'm going to do it in a nice roundabout way. Mm -hmm. He'll be, you know, he, he, maybe somebody will be lucky to have him, but he's not going to be back in Dallas next mm. year. And Jerry just basically said that in a whole bunch of words. You make a bunch of good points. <laughs> and I'm about to drop the hammer on my point. <laughs> I'm about to unleash. There is so much I'm sick and tired about watching these Dallas Cowboys at now six and six. But the one member of this organization uh -oh. I am the sickest of, I bet you ain't gonna and say I it. am the tiredest of, I bet you ain't gonna say it. is the owner or general oh, manager. Jerry, really? you hear that? I am so sick and tired <laughs> of him playing to the crowd because he knows the crowd is on hair trigger. What are you going to say next, Jerry? Hanging on every word. Yeah, well, what's next? Oh, does that mean you're going to fire him or keep him? Fire him or keep him? Fire him or keep him? <laughs> every day after day after day. And it takes the onus off and the focus off and the blame off of the man who probably deserves the bit. No, not probably. Does deserve the largest portion of the blame for 6 and 6, and that is Jerry Jones. Yes. He's the one who, I believe, overpaid Zeke. I believe he overpaid Demarcus Lawrence. I believe he overpaid the entire offensive line. <laughs> I believe he has kept Jason Garrett at least six years too long, and we're still going back and forth day after day after day. Keep him, fire him, keep him, fire him. Which is it, Jerry? Oh, wait a second. Maybe you're the problem, Jerry. This is the classic moment when I wish Jerry Jones could be fired. <laughs> Obviously, that can't happen, but right. I wish that he were the equivalent of an elected official that we could vote oh. out of office. I wish Cowboy Nation, anybody who had the credentials to be a true lifelong Cowboy fan, got a vote. Mm. And we could just vote him out, <laughs> right? Because the truth is, I think he would have been voted out a long time ago. Yeah. And this was another classic case of a moment when he should just be voted out. The last man I wanted to hear from yesterday was Gerald Wayne Jones Jr. Because 
this team has enough problems without him creating another distraction for this team. And this is nothing but Jerry's ego talking. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, look, and we're falling right into the trap, so I'm, I'm not going to be a hypocrite here. Blame us, too, for, right. for reacting. But, but you almost have to react right. to this because they're still relevant. They still have, as I said yesterday, this is the damnedest dynamic I've ever encountered in my history of covering your league and yeah. your sport. <laughs> the Eagles somehow rendered them relevant again right. and rendered Jerry relevant again by falling on their faces in Miami. That's the only reason we're having this conversation is they reopened the door for Jerry to run through. Because what did Fox Bet say? They still have a 60% chance of winning the division? The Cowboys did. Yes. But they didn't until Philly went and lost <laughs> You're in Miami. You're exactly right. Because I thought Philly was just going to parade to the division championship. They had the easiest schedule left in the National Football League, yep. starting with the Dolphins, the easiest game of their five left. Right. And they lost it. And all of a sudden, it allows the Dallas Cowboys to lose at, uh, obviously. They lost to the, Buffalo at home. But, lost no, but I mean, they, they could go lose at. Oh, at, yeah. They could lose know, at, Chicago. at Chicago. Right. And then they could come home and lose to the Rams. And they're still afloat. Right. And it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter whether they win or lose the next two games. All that matters is they have to go win at Philadelphia. Correct. And they have to come home and beat the Redskins. Correct. And then they'll be undefeated in the division, and they will get a home playoff game. Correct. So now I have to put up with, as a lifelong Cowboy fan, an owner who honestly has a whole bunch of Antonio Brown in him. <laughs> yeah. What do we say about Antonio? He is a victim of social media. Antonio still doesn't get the fact that because he thinks that every time I post Twitter or Instagram, the whole sports world says, did you see what Antonio just said about right. Robert Kraft? Mm -hmm. And yet Antonio doesn't understand that every time he does post, he lessens his chances of ever playing again in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Jerry Jones is the same way, except Jerry doesn't even know what Twitter or Instagram is. Right. <clears throat> All Jerry knows is that all he has to do is snap his fingers and, and he'll have a microphone and at his lips. And on everything right? he says. Yep. Okay? And all he knows is he's got his own radio show. Does any owner, uh, you've said this before, <laughs> does any owner address the media after every game before the coach speaks? No. Nope. No, nobody nope. does. Nobody. Nobody in the history of this game has ever done what Jerry Jones does. Did Jerry do that when you was, I mean, you was covering the team. Did yeah. he do that when Jimmy was there? Yep. He did? He addressed because I was trying, I was trying to go back. I don't think he did, Skip. Huh. And I was there for every one of those games, and it's kind of a blur to me. But right. I, I don't know if he did it before Jimmy, but he would always be available. Yeah, I, yeah you know what? I'm pretty sure he, he did. Would be available. Maybe it wasn't. Now it's become like clockwork, where the media is trained to know. Oh, we got to run and find Jerry, Jerry before Jason speaks. I and, see. Right? And they find Skip. He speaks before the players. <laughs> At least let the players and the coaches tell you what's going on, what happened. Okay. But that's not... But and he, how many owners in this league have ever had their own radio show? No. It's a gig, you know, right. that he yeah. does once a week. Right. None? Because most of I don't know Most any. owners... I can only... Look, Jerry, I have to have his. But I can only think of one other owner that would probably even want to have one, and that would be Al Davis. Because most of the guys tend to stay in the background, and they don't really have anything interesting to say. Fans don't really care what the owner has to say. It's not like he's playing, he's coaching, calling plays or anything like that, Skip. So fans normally, mm. but this guy's unique. Listen, I covered Al Davis. He didn't, he rarely spoke rarely to me. Rarely spoke. And he rarely would return my phone call unless he had something he needed yeah. to get yeah. out there. Correct. And then one night at camp that I was there, when he called me over to tell me, you know what happened, he's talking about the tuck rule play. Right. He says, you know what happened? He you know who got on the phone in New York, don't you? Paul Tagliabue got on the phone. He believed that. He went yeah. to his grave believing yeah. uh, that the, the NFL had it in for him, and they reversed that phone. Okay. But he wanted to tell me that, so he he did this. He called me over to mm -hmm. tell me after a training camp practice the sun was going down up there in Northern California. Wow. And yet, could I get him on the phone? Did he have a radio show? No. no. Did he speak after games? Never. No. Mm -mm. Never, ever. He disappeared. I mean, Al Davis was pretty much a ghost. Right. Right? Until, unless he wanted to fire somebody like he did Lane Kiffin, and he called up there and did a pinpoint skip. You know, he pointed out, we well, did this and he did that. But then Lane Kiffin tried it, uh, Janikowski got to try the 80-yard field goal. That probably was the end of it right that there. That was it. <laughs> that was it. So I will bet you 
that Jerry Jones spent some time the night before yesterday morning. We'll see, that was Tuesday. So Monday night, mm -hmm. I will bet you he spent some time working on this cryptic line wow. of his. Of course. Just so he could get Shannon Sharp to say, well, we know what it means. Yeah. Jason's gone. Right. And we can get somebody else to say, no, maybe he means Jason's going to be a cowboy yeah. next year. Maybe it works both ways. I will bet you that Jerry Jones was chuckling before his radio gig yesterday, like, watch this. Mm -hmm. I, I will drive them all crazy. I will drive them into a, a media tizzy mm -hmm. after my radio show where they will all be wondering exactly what I'm trying to say right. here. And I don't care what he's trying to say because you can argue, well, he's trying to create a little more creative locker room tension. They don't need that right, right. now. The point is, Jason Garrett is going to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys for the rest of this year. Correct. Because Philly ensured that. Right. And I don't think Jerry would have fired him anyway. I don't either. But, but the point is, now they're still afloat. They're still alive all the way until December 22nd. And that game will determine everything. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.